while experimenting with modifiers i stumbled upon this amazing animation and i'm really excited to share the process with you guys so let's get right into it all right so to start the process we're going to click on file new and general just to open our default blender scene here and i'm just going to click on a and delete everything once we have this i'm going to quickly go ahead and do a shift a and add an icosphere into my scene and I'll give it four subdivision and right click and shade smooth. Once that is done, we're going to add a torus in our scene and let's go ahead and scale it up a little bit. Now hop into the edit mode and click on Alt S and Z. Now, as soon as I do that, it makes sure that it doesn't scale on Z axis, but only scaling on X and Y axis. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I want a thin line around it and not a torus that thick. So once we have this, that's our first circle. So we're going to go ahead and add the second circle in the scene for this we'll do shift D and do RX 90 on your number pad and as soon as I do that now we have two different rings that will be orbiting around our object right so now we are done with our basic modeling let's start with uh, adding modifiers to it so I'm gonna click on my icosphere here and click on this modifier properties click on add modifiers and then let's quickly add a wireframe modifier and let's increase the thickness a bit and I'll uncheck this replace original just to make sure that we have the object all together then we'll go ahead and add a decimate modifier in our seat now we can keep this before the wireframe because we want the decimate modifier to be affecting the wireframe modifier right so just make sure that this stacking is in the way that i'm showing you now the next thing we'll do is we'll hop into the edit mode and then select all the vertices so for that i'll click on a to select everything now go to the object data properties this vertex group i'm going to click on that plus sign here and click on assign and just make sure that all the vertices of this object are assigned to this group so now we're going to go ahead and select that same group in both of these modifiers and we'll add another modifier here that is the vertex weight proximity modifier this is the one that is going to make sure that our wireframe is only appearing uh, in certain places and not covering the entire object so for that i'll select that vertex group over here as well and for the target object we're going to leave it as it is for now we'll come back to it later on when we are actually doing the animation just make sure that the proximity mode is changed to geometry and also the fall off you change it to smooth and just click on this inward fall off now once we are done with that we are going to go ahead and copy those modifiers over onto the other objects as well so just make sure you're selecting the other objects and then selecting your original icosphere and then click on Control l and copy modifiers now as soon as i do that my modifiers are appearing on all three of them so that's pretty much it as far as the modifier stacking goes now we're going to go ahead and add our textures in it for that let me quickly pull out another window here and i'm going to switch which to the shader editor and let's click on new to add a new material and let's go to the material preview as well so that we can see what's happening now we want to make sure that the original cube has a different material than uh, the wireframe and for that all we need to do is click on this object come to your wireframe modifier and for this material offset i'm gonna go ahead and switch it to one and once i do that this is the original material of the cube and if i want the wireframe to have a different material all i have to do is click on this plus sign here and whatever material now I I add to this one is what is actually going to be affecting the wireframe right so like i'll switch it to emission and let's keep it like this for now but there are a few render settings that we need to enable just to make sure that our materials are looking good right so we'll go to render properties we'll click on ambient inclusion bloom and screen space reflections also ensure that you're clicking on film and clicking on transparent and for color management we are gonna change the look from none to very high contrast yeah let's go back to the material properties let's go back to the original material and i'm gonna quickly add a noise texture in here and we'll take this noise texture and also add a bump node and take the normal from the bump node and plug it into the normal of my principal DSDF and also take the factor from the noise texture and plug it into the height of my bump node. 
I'm gonna switch off the wireframe for now so that we can at least see what's happening with our material. So we'll go back to the modifier properties. We'll just click on this real time display modifier in viewport. We'll just uncheck that. And as soon as I do that now, it's only showing me the sphere. So let's go ahead and increase the details on this so that we have a little bit more interesting looking texture. So I'm gonna increase it all the way up to this, up to 16. Reduce the roughness a little bit and add a slight distortion of 0.1 but it's covering the entire surface and that is not what i want so i'm gonna go ahead and add a color ramp in here and let's plug it right between pump node and the noise texture and let's bring the black closer to the white so what's happening now is that we have a little bit more control so now we have plain areas and we have those pumps showing up right so this is something that you can actually play with and uh, just come to a number that you actually feel satisfied with right so i think this looks pretty good to me so i'm gonna take the same color output here and plug it into the roughness as well because i want the same texture to be affecting my roughness of my object so as soon as i do that now as you can see the plain surfaces are reflecting its background and the one that is bumpy is more rough right so we also change the object to metallic and increase the specular to one as well i know it looks a little bit weird here but it's gonna look different when we actually render it right so yeah that's that's pretty much it as far as the base object goes so let's switch on the wireframe once again and we will go ahead and edit the emission shader now so let's move to the emission shader let's go ahead and add a color ramp in here and we'll take the color output and plug it into the color of the emission the next thing we'll do is we'll add a noise texture and we'll take the factor of the noise texture and plug it into the factor of our color ramp and let's go ahead and reduce the roughness a bit and increase the detail all the way up to the 16th and i'll go ahead and change this color to slightly orangish and let's add another one and make it lighter red yeah this looks pretty good i'm gonna increase the emission strength to about five so that uh, we know what's happening make it a little bit more darker and again you guys can play with these colors until you are satisfied and just choose the ones that you actually feel comfortable with i'm gonna reduce the scale over here to about one i think looks pretty okay and actually let's go 1.5 i think this looks pretty good let's add a little bit of distortion in this to about 0.2 this looks pretty okay now uh, i know i copied the modifier a little bit earlier but uh, let's do it once again just to make sure that our materials are also getting copied right so we'll do Control n and do a copy modifiers and then do Control l again and link materials now the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and create that animation so for that i'll click on seven just to go into the top view and let's do a shift a and add an empty and i'll do shift d again to duplicate that empty and do a g y to move the duplicated empty onto the y axis somewhere around here where it's just touching the sphere so what we'll do is we'll click on this empty and then click on the original empty that was created and do a control p and parent that object to the original empty now this is essential to create our animation now we'll go back to our uh, icosphere and uh, in this vertex weight proximity modifier now in the target object i'm going to select the empty 001 that i just created now as soon as i do that can you see it's automatically just making sure that the wireframe is only available on uh, the location where the empty is present for example if i move the empty now the wireframe moves with it so now there are a few other things that we need to do so i'm gonna hide, hide these uh, toruses around it just to make sure that we get a better glimpse of our icosphere here so can you see that uh, in the decimate modifier right now we have not selected anything right so the ratio is one and it's it's entirely showing everything so i'm gonna reduce the ratio to 0.8 just to reduce the number of wireframes that we have and this actually is going to give it that crawling effect so what will happen is when we when we animate it it will go ahead and randomly decimate those wireframes over there right and which will give it a really nice crawling effect as to the texture is actually crawling so in the vertex weight proximity modifier let's reduce the lowest to or increase the lowest to 0.5 and reduce the highest 0.8 right and we can play with our uh, decimate modifier just to get a good number here so i think 0.86 looks like a good number to go with and for the wireframe i'm gonna change the offset to one just so that this wireframe is a little bit above the icosphere and not just 
touching it all together and let's increase uh, the wireframe thickness to about 0.05 and again you guys can play with it depending on what you feel more comfortable with so 0.05 looks good to me right and we will click on our empty open our timeline here go to frame one and let's add a keyframe for every option in the rotation and we'll come to frame 251 and i'll change the values here to 360 for all of those right now if i go ahead and play it can you see it's automatically adding that animation there now it's a little bit more dynamic than i wanted to be so i'll go back here and let's increase it by 0.9 now it looks pretty good as far as that animation goes if i go to the render view can you see that it just looks amazing right so now the next thing that we are actually going to animate are the toruses right so let's go back to the torus let's select the first one and go to the edit mode and let's add a group here as well and click on assign now this is just to make sure that we have a vertex group so each object will have a different vertex group of its own right so we will have to repeat this process for uh, the other torus as well all right so we have the vertex group added to both of these and now we will need another empty that is there in here right animating the toruses is a two-step process right so the very first thing that we will actually do here is we'll go ahead and click on curve and add a circle let's just scale it up right up to the point where it's interacting with the torus and let's go ahead and add another empty and let's bring it in onto the y-axis and now what we are going to do is that we'll take this empty and we'll click on that circle the bezier circle that we've created before this and then do a control p and click on follow path right and just go to the bezier circles object data properties click on path animation and let's change this to 251 frame the frame value now if we select this empty or actually we select this torus and go to our uh, modifier properties let's go ahead and select this empty here so it's automatically making sure that it's only affecting this area let's increase the lowest to 0 0.2 and reduce the highest to 0 0.8 and reduce this to about i think 0 0.9 should work for this one as well as far as the wireframe goes i'll go 0, 0.0 Two, just to make it slightly less thicker than the original one as Taurus itself is less thicker and let's increase the factor to two let's see what it does yep I think it looks pretty good if you can see now the animation is moving along the Taurus but I also want to make sure that this torus is rotating it in itself now just to make sure that we don't lose that animation that we just created what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna select that bezier circle and then i'm gonna select my torus and then click on Control p and object right so now what will happen is that if i animate this torus my bezier circle is gonna follow my torus so let me show you what i mean right so let's go to the object properties of Horus. let's go back to frame one and we'll add keyframes to all the rotation values come to frame 251 and let's change this to 360 as well now if i run it can you see that what is happening is that is torus is rotating in itself but the empty is also rotating right around the top now we're going to do the same thing with the other torus as well so i'm just going to go ahead and speed this up All right, so yeah, I went ahead and added that into this as well. And uh, yeah, the animation just looks amazing. Actually, I don't wanna go ahead and do 360 on the other one as well. Uh, let's, let's go back to the frame one. Since we rotated this torus originally, current value of the x-axis is showing 90. It's gonna affect our animation, so I'm gonna do a control A and apply the rotation just to make sure that I have all zero value when I start. And then we can go to frame 251 and let's add a minus 360 as a rotation value, right? So that it will rotate in the opposite direction than the original one, which will just give it a little bit more dynamic effect. Okay, our animation is essentially ready, but it's way too dark in our scene. So what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and add a light in here so let's add a point light and move it up on the z axis and let's move it a little bit front on the y axis and we'll increase the value of this to about a thousand thousand seems too much so let's reduce it to 500 it's like when i reduce the metallic value 
was just it's just giving it a weird effect so i'm just going to increase the metallic value a little bit just get a little bit more reflections here and the last thing that we can actually do let's quickly find a location where this entire effect is the most which i think it's on the y-axis somewhere around here right so i'll click one on my number pad and then let's go ahead and add a camera and let's select a better view that we think will be more suitable for our renders so i think this is a good one so i'll do Control alt zero to snap camera to my view and there we go so i really hope that this was useful and you liked this video if you did don't forget to like share subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video